intellectual property. Mm -hmm. You're talking about a trademark or a, a patent? Yeah. Okay. Um, in, in China, you, ha you need to engage a, for China, for example, it's going to be different in Taiwan or Indonesia, but you need to engage what we would call back home a patent attorney, so someone that's it's authorized to submit these documents to Beijing in China's case. And so they're, they're pretty easy to find, you know, a couple hundred Australian dollars to register a brand, a bit more if you're talking about a utility patent or other types of intellectual property. So patent attorney, country that you're looking for, maybe the product category, but that, that might not be a direct hit. If you need a hand, if it's China related, I'd be happy to, to help you out. Yeah, thanks. Just wondering if um, a purchase is made through Alibaba mm. with the trade assurance, yeah. whether the contract is as important or how, how that works. Yeah, good, good point. Um, the trade assurance and Alipay, I'm pretty sure there's caps to how big of, a, of an amount you can transfer at any given time. In my experience, it's mostly used for buyers that are purchasing under $10,000 and below. Um, once you get larger than that, then you're dealing with teletransfers and maybe even letters of credit. So that service seems pretty good at protecting your money. It's not going to disappear for smallers, but it doesn't really confirm that that the supplier understands what's important for you in terms of the long-term relationship. We talked about getting those interests aligned, being in parallel. So even if you're going to use those payment processing facilities, it's still good to have a contract because it, it validates that the supplier understands your key terms. You know, you might have a non-compete clause. You don't want the supplier to sell to your competitor in New Zealand. So the payment processing isn't going to have any protection for that. Um, so the payment services you talked about protect your money from disappearing, um, but they don't really help with the relationship with the, with the supplier. It, it can't hurt. Yeah. Um, just referring to trademarking, yeah. if I have a trademark here and I want to produce something overseas and that trade, and that name is taken by another company in another yeah. country, how do I go about producing that country that be a breach of their trademark? Yeah, that's, so one simple way to protect your yourself from knockoffs. Maybe you've got a great Australian brand and you're worried that this American company with a lot of money is going to knock off your product in China. So one way or India. One way to stop them is that you register your brand in the location where production is going to take place. And after your, your brand is registered, you own the intellectual property, you can actually go to the uh, customs authorities at the ports and say, this is my authorized supplier. Because if you want to shut shut down a knockoff artist who is cannibalizing your business, the best way is to hit him in the pocketbook. So I've waited until I knew we have a case with an Australian toy and it was being knocked off by a London-based company. So we waited till the London company placed a purchase order in China. We knew what they were doing it. They were going about taking orders and coming to the trade shows. So we waited until we knew that they had paid deposits, they had money in the pipeline. And then we went to the Chinese authorities and say, this is the registered trademark and this is our licensed manufacturer in China. No other exporters are, are authorized. And so that whole container load of the competitor's product was impounded and destroyed. It messed up their supply chain because now no one gets paid. Their supplier didn't even know that it was a counterfeit product or that it, that it was infringing because that UK company just said, hey, make this. What supplier is not going to make it if there's a deposit given with them? So we can't blame the Chinese supplier in that case. But we really, we, we stopped the supply chain of the competitor because we spent 600 Australian dollars to register the, the trademark and the brand logo in Beijing. What if that trademark was already registered by someone else over there? Yeah, now you've got a, your hands, you've, you're in an uphill battle, um, especially if it was predatory where a supplier this happens a lot. Australian company doesn't register their brand because they say, hey, we've got the brand registered in Australia. We don't sell anywhere else in the world. Who cares about China? But then your Ch Chinese supplier registers that brand. A couple years later, you want to sp switch suppliers, and now you can't export your product out of China with your brand on it because the supplier owns the, owns the IP. So if you are in that situation, and then you know, it might be go to dispute resolution, you might have to pay, pay an amount, you know, it's, it's negotiable now, but it's going to be very hard because China's first to register, not first to market, for you to say, hey, this brand is ours, 
you know, maybe with enough pressure from a lawyer, and but it, it won't be easy. Just one last question, yeah. Um, if somebody else has that mark over there, as long as they don't sell, can I produce my items in that country under my name just in Australia? So you're saying that somebody else has the same mark that you do, and they own that mark in Australia? I'm sorry, in... Maybe the... Let's have the microphone there. I want to clarify the question. It sounds quite technical. Question, All right, it's a good one. I have the trademark here. Okay. Someone has it in China. Someone else, all right. I'm going to produce an item under my brand in China to yeah. sell in Australia. You know that, that the uh, Chinese party could stop you if they knew that you're doing it. Maybe they're not savvy enough to tell the customs authority that they own that brand. But if it's in the marketplace and they see that, hey, you're doing a great job making a lot of money, going to trade shows, eventually they're going to figure it out and try to stop you. So maybe you want to sort this out in advance, either by changing your brand, if you're a startup maybe, or negotiating a solution. But it's, it's uh, l lesson learned. It's a lot easier to register your trademark first and, and, and then the system's working for you. Uh, if I can make any introductions to try to help you out, I will, I will try. All right, thank you again for your time. If you, if you, if you want the presentation, just leave your business card and I'll send it to you. Thanks.